Welcome to The Digital Thread. I'm your host, Cassandra Yoakum, and today I'm here with Quinn Evans. I have Charles and Rob with me. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thanks. So, you guys are experts in HBIM. Can you explain to my audience what HBIM is? Uh, sure, yeah, so HBIM is an initiative that we started back in 2014, 2015. Um, it, what the acronym stands for is Historic Building Information Management because it's really about going beyond the model. It's leveraging that I that we talk about in BIM, the information. And that's kind of been a buzzword. That's been a buzzword for the past few years, but it's taking the information, whether it be through facilities and operation maintenance, or also through, you know, we work with properties like uh, George Washington's Mount Vernon, which is literally centuries old. And so with that hundreds and hundreds of years of building history, there are thousands of documents associated with that. And so you want to associate all of that record information to the building currently to make sure that the clients are making the most informed stewardship uh, decisions that they can for preservation in the future. Speaking of buzzwords, digital twin is seen as a buzzword in the industry. Is that a buzzword to Quinn Evans? Yeah, it's a, it also, it's an interesting point, interesting question. Uh, Digital Twin, I mean, as you mentioned, is a buzzword in the industry and has been around for a while now. Uh, Digital Twin is, for the preservation aspect in which we're using it, isn't necessarily the right term because it's we're really talking about a reflection of the building, not just a, a separate entity that can be used and operated, but we consider you know, what we're working with HBIM Digital Twins as a reoccurring life cycle, something that's constantly being updated, constantly being uh, amended with new construction projects that have to happen, or you know, the uncovery of old records that we didn't know previously existed, or you know, with, with older buildings, oftentimes you're gonna run into unforeseen conditions. Not oftentimes, every time you're gonna run into unforeseen conditions. And so when you're doing your innovation, you'll open up a wall and you'll realize, I don't know, maybe the structural framing is entirely different than you expected, or the, the plumbing and piping and mechanical systems are completely different. And so, you know, a, a twin is, it's a digital twin is a, it's a good term, but we're really talking about a, a reoccurring life cycle reflection of what actually exists. I, th I think the definition that most people use as digital twin is, um, like we go a little bit beyond what that definition is because we like to think of this as more of a, like a, a, a filing cabinet, right? Like think of the model as a filing cabinet and then you can click on any element within the model. That is your, file folder and then inside there we have all the documentation all the history of that object within there what challenges do your clients have operating and preserving historical sites from a facility maintenance perspective so a lot, a lot of the the buildings the clients that we work with not only are they culturally or historically significant properties they're, they're currently in use they're being occupied every day and so you have the challenges of just maintaining the day-to-day -day operations but also retaining all of the past history or the cultural significance that makes the buildings or the property so special and so you have things like you have to make sure the hvac system is working you have to make sure the fan cool units are in operation you also have to make sure that the you know for the michigan state capitol uh, for example a client we're working with there are nine and a half acres of decorative paint in their building. You know, you have to make sure that, that that's constantly being updated and, and being documented to make sure that it, that decorative artistic quality that really makes a, a huge character defining feature is preserved for the future. And so with a lot of, I mean, going back to the digital twin, a lot of conversations around digital twins are about the MEP systems and the spaces they serve. We're trying to deal with architectural elements as assets. I, I would add to that some of the challenges are sometimes getting access to spaces. Yeah. So when doing a preservation project, you may need a lift to be able to get close to something or scaffolding. Well, we can record very up close what those elements are. Later on, you want to be able to quickly recall that information. So really the challenge for us is to be able to address the needs of being of the client to get the information they need in as little time as possible. It should be at their fingertips. So that's the challenge. And that's what we're trying to accomplish with this. Yeah, yeah. 
Tell me about your digital twin journey and how hard building a digital twin is. Yeah, it's, it's been a very fun journey, but it has been a complicated one. Because uh, as Rob mentioned, when we, if we take the, the broader view of this journey, it started back in 2014. And but when you're working with historic properties, um, LOD becomes a very critical element to talk, discuss. And so there are some spaces that are like very high preservation priority zones. And so you're modeling to like an LOD 350 at least, every stick. <laughs> I mean, there, there's a staircase in Mount Vernon. And I remember it took me over a month just to model the staircase because every nose, every trim, every like sideboard element are individually modeled in Revit. And so that, that takes a lot of time. Nomenclature becomes especially important then, making sure everyone's talking about the same element in the same place. You want to make sure that you have everything correlated to the exactly the right piece, because otherwise, you know, as Rob mentioned, that virtual link filing cabinet, if you open up a filing cabinet, you're grabbing the wrong file. This makes it useless to everybody. The, the whole thing's about access to information. When we do the model, unlike, say, when you're doing a model for a design project, you might you might model something very uh, granularly, like the individual components, but just in a sliver of the building so that you can represent it. But you do that once, even though it happens repeatedly throughout the building. But we're just seeing it, it's for design intent only, right? HBIM is different because every little piece of the building has its own identity. So in an HBIM, like in a design model, you have a Revit wall, you can define the par parameters, the layers of the wall and everything, and you draw it from point A to point B. In HBIM, we care about the surface of that wall really belongs to the particular room it serves. The opposite side of the wall belongs to that room. So we need to be able to catalog those two elements as separate. And then there's the structure down the center. If we know what the structure is, let's say it's like a, a, a wood stick frame house or something like that, we'll model the individual studs. Uh, if it's mass masonry, we might just model, you know, a solid wall and, and indicate that it's a masonry wall there. But really what we're saying is that it becomes three walls because we need to be able to associate the characteristics of that wall surface with the room that it serves. If you were to give advice to either a client or another AEC firm looking to build a digital twin for a historic site, what would that be? All right, number one, I would say define your priorities. You have to understand why you need the digital twin, and then you can work a little bit backwards from there. So that, that's the first thing. The second thing is, quite honestly, plan for more time to build the model than you would expect, because as I mentioned before, the model tends to be a lot more granular than what you might typically do in a design project. Organization of the data also is really important and that's where the nomenclature comes in again like understanding how you want to like structure the data and then be consistent in using that as a way to organize the model and i'll, I'll add one point onto this you know uh, a metric that we developed in our hfm work is something called degree of reliability all information like having a lot of information is great but not all of that information itself is a great resource because things are marked incorrectly, as builds haven't been updated, uh, our renovations have happened, and that, that information isn't captured. And so we found that you know, you'll use these record sources to track piping throughout a building, but then you know, the technician or engineer will go out into the field and like there'll be a cap and the piping just dies in the middle of a wall and it's not marked anywhere. So tagging it like, we have found that this is mostly reliable and therefore you can trust the sourcing or you know this has been 50 50. don't necessarily count on everything being 100 percent accurate that we have modeled based off of the source that we get that information from thank you both for joining me today it's been so thrilling to get to hear about the historical and how you're bringing so much life to it with the digital twin and honestly, just doing really important work. We didn't even get to touch on that aspect of how important the work you're doing really is. Um, we're going to be coming out with a full client success story uh, here in the future. So keep watching out for that. And thank you both again. No, yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, thanks for having us. It was a pleasure.